Hello fellow humans! So today I'm going to be following a pattern that I printed out which is also linked down below in the description if you want and I'm going to make a shirt slash waistcoat out of it and the thing about this is you're actually going to see in the video I'm going to have a roller coaster of emotions and I'm going to change what I want to do with this project midway so keep watching for that while we do that i'm going to be telling you a story time as always so let's just get right into it so i want to apologize just in case there's some disturbances in the audio melbourne has like 40 kilometer winds today and it's incredibly windy and i just could not find another time to record this so i'm sorry if that happens so this story time takes us back to a time where life seemed normal but the cauldron of trouble was bubbling. And though COVID wasn't a problem yet, Australia was already dealing with a lot. Yes, this takes place at the beginning of 2020. Rona was just a virus which one or two people in Australia had, but the bigger problem was the fires. But over the course of a few weeks, the fires turned into hail and we were back at school. This wasn't very many weeks into the year, actually this was on the 14th of February 2020 which makes it exactly two weeks into the school year. And this particular situation occurred from the time of around 1.30 to about 2pm. Now my year group was split out all over the place but I in particular was in philosophy the actual worst class simply because of the teacher. Man, we hated that teacher. It was raining really heavily outside and the teacher was too busy trying to get the projector to work to yell at us. So at this point we were all just chatting to each other. Now outside our room is the main centre of the building which has two huge lights hanging above it. And these lights started flickering. We didn't think much of it at first, only the occasional joke, and since the rest of the building was pretty dark too, we were just like, oh yeah, seems haunted, oh well. And then, I'm not entirely sure how the conversation came to be, but my friend just exclaims, you know, it's been a while since we had a fire drill, but we just shrugged it off. And while the lights were flickering and the rain was pouring onto the window, there was an announcement. Now I don't exactly remember the words, but it went along the lines of do not panic, the alarms are going off, but do not panic, which ironically made us panic. And the reason for our panic was that we couldn't hear any alarms. And we really only have two alarms at our school, which are the fire alarm and the emergency lockdown alarm in case there's an intruder to the school. And sometimes, well, forgive me if I'm wrong here, but our thinking was in the situation that sometimes lockdown alarms can be sent via the telephone to the classrooms rather than a full-on blaring alert. And even though the phone wasn't ringing, coupled with the flickering lights outside our door and the fact that we couldn't hear a blaring alarm anywhere else in the school, it was completely possible that our phone connection was just not working, so we were laughing it off. But deep inside, we were a little bit scared. One of us even commented, man, this is the reality American students live through each day. And it was kind of frightening. So we spent a while sitting like that, a little freaked out, doing no work because the teacher legit couldn't figure out how to display a video. After a while though, we saw something in our school parking, a fire truck. And then we were confused and honestly, in hindsight, now that I think of it, I wouldn't be surprised if the school had accidentally called the fire brigade rather than the police. But anyways, our thinking in the situation was really confused. The truck was just standing there, not really doing anything. Things just weren't adding up. But then there was an announcement which interrupted all of our conversations. And I actually caught this in recording, so I will play that now. Attention senior school, could you please evacuate the building and make your way to the gym immediately? Please evacuate the building immediately and make your way over to the gym now. Thank you. Honestly, this cracks me up 
every time I hear this audio, it's actually hilarious how we all collectively freak out after the announcement. It's like peak real life comedy. But we did as we were told and we were all being herded to the gym in the rain, still unsure what was actually going on. But this was honestly kind of freaky because the sky was dark, the gym we were heading to was dark, there didn't seem to be anyone in any of the buildings we were passing, and we were being rained on left, right and centre. As we were actually walking into the gym though, it felt very much like the scene from the end of Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Just a large group of people unsure what was going on, kind of scared, being pushed into a large, dark building while we're being rained on profusely. Like, it honestly kind of felt like that in the moment. Not that, not that something awful was going to happen. But that scene was just like the first thing that popped into my mind in order to describe how the situation looked. Once we were in the gym though, we were all just sitting out in random lines. Technically we were supposed to be in our class groups, but I think we were kind of more spread out than that. Just a teacher looking after at us and none of the teachers knew what was going on either. And while we sat there, we were making jokes and just dealing with it in true Gen Z fashion. But as the time passed, it did sink in that something was going on and that something was probably quite dangerous. And I got a little bit scared here because my brother, who was only in year one or year two, wasn't there. Actually, none of the primary school students were there. They were just going on with their merry little subjects, whatever art projects they had. And here we were, stressing out because we didn't know what was happening in our school where there was a fire truck outside, lights flickering, and us being cooped up in this gym. But in a bit, actually, my memory is really awful. I don't remember if the primary school students were ever brought into the gym or if they weren't, but I don't think that really matters to the situation anyways. Now, the usual finishing time of our school is 3.15, but at like quarter to three, all of the teachers will just like, all right, guys, we're going to take you back to your classrooms. Just take whatever you need, get your bags, and you're going to go home. And the next bit was actual chaos. We all ran to our building, grabbed all the stuff we had, went to our lockers, and the lockers were honestly, in hindsight, the most un-COVID friendly thing to have ever existed. But we all grabbed our bags, we were running through the rain, I collected my brother and my cousins, and we went out to the front of the school where we waited for my mum. And it was actually hilarious. Actually, this completely coincided with the time my mum got off work. She finishes work at 2.45 and she just came straight from work to school and she was like, yo, I just got an email from the school, like, come collect your kids early, something's happening, what's wrong, what's happening? But luckily, though whatever occurred that day was scary, it didn't end up harming anyone, and we were only lured out of the building as a precautionary stance. So now, what actually happened was that because of the rain, I'm pretty sure one of the fuse boxes, or one of the boxes which controls the electricity in the senior school building, was either blown up or badly damaged by the pelting rain. And so it was now exposed to these, to the air, to the school, to the students. And they had to get us out of there before anything actually happened to it. And I'm pretty sure they were also scared because it was still being rained on at that very moment. Which is why there was a fire truck there just in case an electrical fire started. And now on to the actual garment. Initially, I was planning to make a top out of this, one with really poofy sleeves, but I made the sleeveless bodice bit first. I have the pattern linked down below, but it doesn't have any measurements on it. So what I did was I displayed it onto our TV and then traced around it on paper and used those as my pattern pieces. Now this fabric was actually one I had lying around for quite a while and it was the leftovers from our curtains. 
which is why it's in such thin strips. But I pinned the strips together and laid out my pattern on top, pinned it and then cut it out. The next step I took was to sew the front middle strips together and then I pinned my pieces together and sewed them together too. And while when I summarize it, it sounds like a very easy task, just having to stitch every line, pinning the pieces exactly together and having to re-thread the machine several times is a tedious task, but at least on video, it looks easy breezy. Now after I had sewn all the pieces together, I had to install the zipper in the back and I had only ever installed one zipper before and I did an awful job at it. But luckily, this material was much more forgiving and I'm very pleased with how the zipper came out. Now at this point, I was very happy with my labor and it was at this point that edges undone and nothing pressed together. I tried it on with my pirate shirt and I fell in love with the look. I didn't want it to be a shirt anymore, but I didn't know how many outfits I would be able to style just a vest with and I didn't know what I would do with so much leftover fabric anyways. After I hemmed all the edges, I tried it on again and it still looked amazing and this is how it looked. Now, while hemming, I had thought about how I wanted this project to turn out, so I decided to make a little undershirt thing for it so that I could attach my sleeves to that. So I could wear my sleeves under the west, so I could wear this whole top with sleeves attached to it while wearing the vest on top so I could have sleeves if I wanted and then just the vest if I wanted. So I took one of my brother's very old shirts and I cut off the sleeves of it and I also cut a deep squarish neckline which I thought would fit under the vest. Now this step did take quite a lot of trial and error. I had to cut it and then try it on and then cut it some more and try it on quite a few times but in the end I think that it did work out fine where if I just put on this cut up top and the vest I had made it would very nicely conceal what was under it but once I had that ready I took out my cabbage in order to try and find a piece which was large enough to make a cuff out of for both of my sleeves. I just had to get the thickness when folded right and also make sure that it fit around my wrist but once I was happy with my two pieces, I just cut out the exact size I needed. And then it was on to just stitching the cuffs closed so they were a circle and so I just folded them inside out and did that even though it didn't really matter which side was inside and which side was outside. After I stitched them closed though, I got out my actual sleeve fabric. And for some reason I didn't actually video this bit but basically I took two of the leftover strips of the curtain fabric and I joined them together 
and then I stitched along the side so it just made one enclosed loop. Then I took a pattern piece for a sleeve which I also traced around and I used that to make a sleeve shape and then we move to the next bit which is me gathering the bottom of the sleeve so I can attach the cuff onto it. Now I think gathering is quite fun but that's usually because I'm not very meticulous about it. I just kind of roughly go at it like oh yeah that's about the same width apart. I don't really care. I'm fine with it being a little rough and tough. So I also use a very thick woolen thread to do the gathering because sometimes when you're gathering with a thin thread it just snaps in the middle and you have to do it so many times. Now, I'm not going to lie, I did this step so many times and I just kept messing it up. But I did try to persist and I did it again and again until I had something reasonably perfect. Actually, it's pretty imperfect, but I feel like I can hide all the imperfections, which is good enough in my books. After gathering the top portion of the sleeves, I pinned them onto my cutout top situation that I had going and this actually took me quite a while but I wanted to do it perfectly so that's what I did. I took my time on it and then I sewed that together. After that was done, it was looking pretty good so I tried it on with my vest on top and I figured out where I wanted to place some snap fasteners so that this weird bit in the back wouldn't really show and I also wanted to take it in here because it really wasn't flattering but anyways I pinned, well technically I did a lot of weird stuff to get to this point which I'm just gonna skip over because it was an awful idea but basically I marked out where I wanted my snap fasteners to go and I decided to put two, one right at the shoulder and one a little bit back so that it would hide the back bit which flapped over. And I just sewed the snap fasteners onto the vest and the top.
but that's the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed and that you're having a good day and that you continue to have a good day. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.